Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will be discussing about the third problem of today's weekly contest, find punishment number of an integer. The problem says that you are given a positive integer n and you have to return the punishment number of n. Now punishment number of n is defined as the sum of squares of all integers i such that i lies between 1 and n and the decimal representation of i cross i can be partitioned into substrings such that the sum of integer value of these substrings is equal to i. Right? So let's take an example. Let's say n is 10. So we have to figure we have to return the punishment number of 10. Now we have like for finding out the punishment number of 10, we have to figure out which all i will contribute to the punishment number. So i can be in the range of 1 to n. So basically we have to check for all these 10 integers which of these i will contribute to the punishment number. So in this uh, particular case, let's take 10 as an example. So for 10, the square is 100. You can partition 100 into 10 plus 0 and you can see the value of 10 plus 0 is equals to the original integer 10. And hence, 10 will contribute to the part punishment number of n, right? Similarly, let's take 9. If you do square of 9, it will be 81. You can partition 81 into 8 and 1 and the sum of 8 and 1 would be equals to the original integer 9. Hence, 9 will also contribute to the punishment number. And finally, you can try out 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. None of them would have these properties satisfied. Basically, you can't partition any of them such that they their sum is equal to the original number. The last number which will contribute to the punishment number of 10 is 1. Because 1, one cross 1 is also 1 and you can partition this 1 into a single integer 1 which is again equal to the original integer 1. Hence, 1 is also, 1 will also contribute to the punishment number. So, final punishment number would be the sum of all these. So, sum of 1, 81 and 100 which would be 182. So, the output here is 182. So, hope the problem statement is clear. Now, how to solve this? So, notice that we just have to figure out, like we will just first try out the brute force approach. So, the brute force approach would be try out every possible integer i and see if that contributes to the punishment number or not, right? So, to figure out whether i will contribute to the punishment number of no, punishment number or not, we need to figure out or figure out a way to say that, okay, is it possible to partition the square of i such that it is equals to the original integer or not. So, let's try to solve this problem first. So, we are, we are trying to understand whether it is possible to partition the square of a number such that the sum of the partitions is equals to the original number or not. So, in this case, let's take 36. The sum of the square is 1 to 9, 6 and you can see you can partition this into this particular way. 1 plus 29 plus 6 will be equals to 36, right? So, this is one possible way. What are other possible ways? So, there are like you can partition it into like this 12 and 96, right? Similarly, you can partition it into 12, 9 and 6, right? And there are other possible ways as well. So, let's try to figure out what is the total number of ways in which we can partition this number, right? So, we have the maximum value of n as 1000. So, the maximum, like the square of 1000 would be 10 to the power 6, right? So, 10 to the power 6 uh, is, uh, like 10 to the power 6 is a good number which will contribute to the punishment number always, right? So, we can say that, okay, we have maximum number as 6 digits, right? We have a 6 digit number and we have to figure out whether this is, we have to figure out how many total partitions are possible with this 6 digit number, right? So, now, we have to first say, okay, how many partition do we want it to be partitioned in, right? So, we'll say, okay, we'll first partition this number into two numbers. So, like there are various possible ways to do that. This is one possible way. This is another possible way. And there are other possible ways as well. 
so there are some ways to partition this number into two partitions similarly there will be some number of ways to partition this number into three partitions right and there will be some number of ways to partition this number into four partition and so on and so forth so basically we can the finally we can say that okay there are, there will be some number of ways to partition this number into six partition where each digit will be in its own partition right so in total we can divide the problem into okay we need to find out how many ways are there to partition this number into one partition how many ways are there to partition this six digit number into two partition and then three partition four partition five partition and six partitions right so finally we will sum them all up and we will get the answer so this is the problem basically we have to figure out how many ways are there to partition this number into one partition two partition three four five and six now let's forget about one because one is straightforward we like there is only one way to partition this into one partition now where 5c0 is coming from we will look at that but first let's try to understand the case of two basically we are saying that we have to partition this number into two partition what does in turn mean in turn it means that we have to put one barrier and we will say okay whatever is in the left of this barrier would be one partition and whatever would uh, in the right of the barrier would be another partition now what are the what are the possible places to put this barrier in so we can put this barrier here we can put this barrier here 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 notice that you can't put this barrier here because in that case uh, there is only single partition there is not multiple partition and similarly you can't put this barrier here as well for the same reason so there are total five possible ways to put this barrier in and you have to choose one way you have to choose one place among these five possible places so hence the number of ways in which you can partition this number into two ways or you can put a barrier among these five places is 5c1 now let's talk about the condition for 3 uh, basically you have to put this uh, you have to partition this number into three partitions so this in turn means that you have to put two barriers right you can say okay this is first partition this is second partition and this is third partition right so this problem is again very similar you have five places you have to put two barriers so you will say okay 5c2 is a number of ways to partition this number into three partitions and similarly you can say 5c3 is a number of ways to partition this into four partition 5c4 for 5 and 5c5 for 6 and similarly for one as well you can say uh, you don't have to put any barriers right for one for partitioning this number into one partition you don't have to put any barriers so you can say 5c0 so total number of ways to partition this number would be the sum of all this so sum of all this would be 2 to the power 5 with uh, simple binomial theorem that we have uh, studied in 11 and 12th so if we try to generalize it if there are d digits right the total number of ways would be 2 to the power d right now you have partitioned this into some partitions let's say right now after partitioning you have to figure out the decimal representation of each of these and sum them all up and see if it is equal to 36 or not right so after partitioning you will iterate over the entire array figure out the decimal for each of them decimal representation for each of them and sum them all up so that will require order d time again right so in total you will require this time 2 to the power d into t to figure out whether this number is whether this squared number is contributing to the punishment number or not or in other words whether this squared number can be partitioned such that the sum is equals to the original number or not right so if you see to the maximum value of d here is 6 or 7 or as well if you want to con consider 10 to the power 6 but uh, in a sense 2 to the power 6 into 6 is not a huge number and you can try out it means you can try out this algorithm for every possible number between 1 and n so the brute force solution would have the time complexity of this 
and this will fit nicely within the given time constraint itself so basically we have just proved that even the brute force solution where we are iterating over every number and trying to see whether it is it will contribute to the punishment number or not by figuring out every possible partition of that squared number will also work right now that we have proved this particular thing we just need to understand how to implement this algorithm right basically we we will now not see that okay if i first i will figure out all the partitions for one partition then two partition and three partition and so on basically we can use simple recursion here to figure out the entire partition because we know that number of partition would not be greater than 2 to the power d so we can use the recursion freely and we are assured that the total number of uh, uh, leaves or total number of paths the recursion can take would not exceed the given time complexity right so what we can simply do we can say that okay uh, i will start my partition let's say at index i right and i will try every possible ending of the partition so let's take this example here let's say i will start from here right i will say okay my first partition would end here now i will say okay uh, try out every possible partition of this uh, but this remaining string and then the second scenario will say okay the first partition will end here now try out every possible scenario for this similarly for third case you can say my first partition will end here now try out every possible scenario for the rest so basically we are trying out everything for the starting index i every possible partition the the partition can be this can be this or this or, or this fourth string and so on and so forth right so the pseudo code for this would look something like this we'll say we'll maintain the sum on the fly with the current index i where we have to start from so we will say if i is equals to d basically we have traversed the entire string then we will simply compare this sum with the original number n if the if they are equal it means we found a valid partition and will return true otherwise we will return false right now for if it is not true it means we are somewhere in the middle of this string right so from here we will try out every possible partition so this is first one this is second one second possible partition this is third possible partition and so on and so forth right so we will try out every possible r now r could be anything in the range i to n minus 1 so this would be minus 1 right uh, now for this for the partition for the current partition we will figure out the integer value so we'll say what is the decimal value for the current partition decimal value would be the value within the range i to r right and once we figure out this value we'll say this is the current sum now and we have to now evaluate everything starting from r plus 1 right so this if this returns true it means we found a valid partition and we can simply return true from here and break out from the loop if this isn't return true it means with the given current partition we can we can't uh, figure out a way to partition this entire string such that the sum is equals to the original number so we will try out the next partition and if we have if I, like if we have exhausted all possible partition with the current index i it means we we don't find anything which can give us the original number n and will return false right so this is the entire algorithm and we are like why we are able to apply this because we know that this will not go beyond 2 to the power d and 2 to the power d is very small in this particular scenario right so now let's look at the code quickly and we'll uh, so firstly like before looking at the code i would strongly encourage you to try this entire thing by yourself because it's just simple brute force we are just applying uh, brute force with a particular recursion and the recursion pseudo code we already have seen so you should be able to code this entire thing by yourself so next let's look at the code 
The code is very similar to the studio code that we have seen. We will try out every possible number from 1 to n. We will figure out whether this is valid. If it is valid, we will add j cross j to the result and finally we will return the result, right? Now is valid is again very simple. We will first figure out the square of the number. We will convert this entire thing to a string and we will call this function can partition with sum with 0 0 as n. So 0 is the current sum, 0 is the current index and s is the original string and n is the target sum which we want to achieve, right? So now this can partition with sum is exactly similar to the uh, the this part decursion pseudocode that we have seen. We'll see if uh, i is equals to n and if it is, we'll see if, if current sum of the partitions is equals to the target sum or not. If it is, we'll return true otherwise return false. And if it is not, we it means that i is in somewhere in the middle. So we will try out every possible partition starting with i. So we'll start from i and uh, will end at i, i plus 1, i plus 2, uh, all the way up to n minus 1. Now for every partition, we will figure out the decimal value, right? And uh, we will then call the same function with current sum plus value. And this index would be till plus 1 because everything up till this index is something which we have already considered in the current partition. So what is remaining? Everything after the current index till is remaining. So we'll call this function with till plus one and uh, s and target sum would be exactly similar. And if it is, if it, if it returns true, it means we have found a valid partition and we will return true as well. Otherwise we will continue and figure out the next partition. If we have exhausted everything, we will return false. Now, finally, this two integer is uh, very straightforward. We will just iterate from everything into L and R and keep on accumulating the decimal value. And finally, we'll return the result. So the entire time complexity we discussed is 2 to the power d into d into n, where the maximum value of d can be 6 or 7, again, based on how you look at. Uh, and that's it. Uh, if you have any doubts in this particular problem, feel free to post them in the comment section below. I would be happy to answer. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.